If your web server is using Java 1.6, can we use Lambda Expression? If your machine is using 1.4, can we use Enhanced for Loop? If you know in which version we got which features, it will be easier for you to understand, right? So in this video, we'll talk about Java versions and in which version we got which features. So welcome back, it is this is Navin Reddy from Thalys for Learnings and in this video we'll talk about different Java versions. So in different Java versions, we what features we got and we'll talk about that. In fact, if you are new to this channel, do subscribe so that we'll get all these type of videos in future. Now, you know, uh, we, we always think about this, you know, we have 1.8 version and we learn about 1.5, what, what difference it does because it, it's okay, right? Java is Java, it doesn't matter which version we, we work with. Uh, no, there, there are some things with changes, you know, with every version they get new updates and and if you are work, if you are learning some concepts like if you are working with generics and what if I say if you are if you are learned generics and if you are using Java 1.4 you cannot use generics. If you have learned Lambda expression and, and by mistake if your server is working on 1.6 you cannot implement or you cannot use Lambda expression in 1.6. So it's important for us to know in which version we got which features. Right? And there are certain versions which got major updates and with, there are some versions which got minor updates. You know, those are just updates. So uh, 1.8, 1.7, those are major updates. In fact, uh, it all started in 1991 when they felt, you know, we need, a, we, we, need a, we need a language which should be platform independent because we were having some good languages before that, right? We were having C++, we were having Smalltalk. I mean, those are awesome languages, right? But then the only problem was they were not platform independent. So they wanted something using which they can achieve platform independence. So they went for Oak language. So when they released Java, the beta version of Java in 1994, they, they named it as Oak and every, everything was good. But in 1995, when they wanted to go for the public release, they thought, you know, we cannot go for Oak because Oak is not, we cannot register the language with Oak language. So they went with something called as Java, right? So in 1.0, we were having some updates which were awesome, you know, I mean, not not, no, not those features which we use now, but it was, it was having some lots of features. And then with every version, there were some classes which was introduced and then the existing classes was also deprecated. Example, there are lots of classes now which we don't use because those are deprecated. Example, if you have ever learned Swing and in Swing when you use some methods like uh, frame methods like show, hide, those methods now are deprecated. So we should not use that. Right? In fact, if you have learned about threads, in threads we have a concept of stopping the thread and we should not use stop method, that's why it is deprecated. So deprecated methods are available to use but we should not use that. Right? So in every update we get these things. Now the current version of Java, which is we are living in 2017, right? So the current version of Java is Java 8. So everyone is using Java 8 now. But what if I say in July they are going for Java 9 and Java 9 is way different from Java 8. So if you are learning Java now, you have to relearn Java in, in for, for the next version. Not everything, not everything you have to relearn, but there are some certain important changes which, with, which they are making with Java 9. Okay, there's a concept of modularity which they are implementing in Java concepts. So in Java 9, we'll be getting modularity. In Java, so they are also planning for Java 10 now. So maybe in two next two years, we will be having Java 10. So it, it, it has some, some extra features as well. But let's talk about the existing features. So it all started with, with Java 1.0. Wow, Java 1.0 which was also called as Oak. So it was having some features but then all the basic features. In 1.1 which released in 1997, okay amazing right? So it's been uh, 20 years now we got 1.1 and in 1.1 they have made lots of updates. Now there's lots of updates, the least are, so the first update, this is the first time I'm using uh, something to read because it's very difficult to remember in which version we got which, uh, in which version we got which features. In fact I remember some but I wanted to give you the exact list, so that's why I'm using this. So, so in 1.1, they came up with the concept of inner classes. Now, if you're not familiar with inner, inner classes, uh, we can have class inside a class. So just imagine in the original version of Java, which is 1.0, inner class was not there. And now, everyone is, is using inner class, right? Maybe a normal inner class or maybe anonymous inner class. Example, if you are working on Android, in Android we use uh, async task. So we create async task, we implement async task inside a class, right? So we create a class and inside a class we create, we implement async task. And if you are working on Swing, if you are working on Android also, we also create anonymous class, right? Uh, so we create object of interface by doing all those things. Example, in uh, 
uh, when you work with J button, so when you try to provide the event to the J button, we also use anonymous class there. But yeah, inner classes are used a lot nowadays. So it was introduced in 1.1. The next, the next thing was Java Beans. So Java Beans was introduced in 1.1. Major update, JDBC was updated. You know? So we can use, so now we take it for granted, right? We have JDBC, but in 1.1 it was introduced and we also get one of my favorite feature, which is RMI. So RMI stands for Remote Method Invocation. So if you don't know about RMI, if you know about RPC, so RPC is same as RMI. The only difference is we were having RMI, RPC earlier and then the object oriented version of RPC is RMI. So they wanted to introduce this concept of objects. They wanted to serialize objects. We can send the object from one place to other place. They went for RMI. But before we used to work with RPC. Then uh, they came up with, so, so that was 1.1. Then we went for 1.2. And then till 1.2, we used to say 1.2, and then they also used one term called as J2SE. So before that, they used to say JDK or Java 1.1. But in 1.2, they came up with the concept of J2SE, which is Java 2 Standard Edition, right? In fact, with the same thing, with, with that version, which is J2SE, they went for two more names, which is J2SE, J2EE, and J2ME. So J2SE for uh, console development for normal, which is core Java basically. The, uh, the J2EE is the enterprise edition. So if you, if you are implementing some enterprise level software, we'll be using J, uh, J2EE. And they also came up with J2ME, which is Java 2 micro edition. So now ev uh, everyone uses Android, right? At that time, it was year 1998. So they, there was no Android, right? So they used to they used to work, they used to create some mobile applications using J2ME, okay? So, so in that, in, in, in Java 2, I mean in Java 1.2, they came with lots of features. One of them was they introduced some swing swing classes. Uh, so earlier, before swing, they used to work with AWT, which is abstract Windows toolkit. And then in in 1.2, they came with the concept of swing. So we can create awesome GUI using swing. And nowadays, nobody is using swing anyway. We are using Java FX. So before 1998, people used to work on AWT. After that, they, they started working on uh, swing. And then now the, now everybody is using Java FX. And in 1.2, they got one more update, which, which everyone uses nowadays, which is collection API. So if you're using collections, you know, add a list, uh, list, then we have uh, set, map, all these things were introduced in 1.2, okay? So if you, by mistake, if you have, if you, in that world of 1.1, there's no collection API. Can you imagine your life in Java without collection API? No, right? In fact, if you, if you're, if, if you're using, the concept of Android or Sublet or JSP, we all use map there, right? And there was no map in uh, in 1.1. Amazing. So in 1.3, so the next version is 1.3, which was released in year 2000. And the updates were, they came with the concept of hotspot JVM. So Oracle, so currently hotspot JVM belongs to Oracle. So whenever you whenever you install JDK, JDK it works on hotspot JVM. So it is still used now. Uh, then uh, in 1.3 they got one more update of GNDI, which is Java Naming and Directory Interface. So by, by you know by any chance if you are working on Java Enterprise World, you will be working on GNDI. So it is like giving certain names to some resources. Right? That is GNDI. So it was not a big update 1.3, but then it was an update. The major update then came is 1.4. Not exactly a big big update, but it was an update. It's another kind of update, and it was year 2002. Right, and I guess I was uh, in my seventh standard. So in, in, in 2002, they came up with the concept of Java 1.4, and again, some updates were there. They introduced the concept of you can use IPv6 in Java now, and then uh, one, one, one big update which was regular expression. So if you if you love regular expression, it came in 1.4. Uh, the next next big uh, thing is assert keyword. Nothing much. I mean, this was 1.4. But then my favorite update is 1.5. Because in 1.5, I got something which I always wanted, which is Genbricks. Now, Genbricks provides you something called type safety. Example, if you work with Collection API, and if you, in Collection API, if you write something like this, when you say list obj equal to new array list, this list elements, I mean, this list can have any type of elements, right? It can have integers, it can have string. So there's no type safety, right? So we wanted to go for type safety, and that's why they went for Genbricks. So Genbricks was introduced in 1.5, and Java became more secure after that. So Genbricks was the biggest update. The next one was auto-boxing and uh, unboxing. So because of boxing, auto-boxing, Genbricks was possible, right? And then the next update was Verag. So we, in 1.5, uh, 
they came up with the concept of well arms. Now what is well arms? So let's say if you are, so it looks something like this. If you want to pass multiple parameters, right? So if you create a method where you want to pass multiple parameters, not one, not two, not three, you're not sure in fact how many parameters you want to send. And at the receiving end, you want to accept all the parameters. Example, if you define a method with two, two parameters, you can pass only two parameters, right? But then if you want to pass multiple parameters, you can use where arms. So all those parameters will become one array. That's the, that's the advantage of using where arms. And there's nothing shame saying this, where arms came from C sharp concept. So in fact, Java and C sharp, they always copy each other, you know? So Java copies concept from C sharp and C sharp copies concept from Java. So this concept of where arms came from C sharp. And not just C sharp, Java tried to copy those concepts from all the different languages because uh, it's not just Java, every language nowadays is copying concepts from other languages so that they can call themselves a perfect language. But none of them are perfect language now anyway. Uh, then the next update was for each loop, which is enhanced for loop. And example, if you have an array of 50 elements, if you want to print all the elements, you have to use a loop, right? And the loop, the loop starts from zero. Again, that's that's one big headache, right? You have to remember this. Array always starts with index number zero. So you don't have to remember that in, in, term, in case of enhanced for loop. You just have to define enhanced for loop like this and you are, you are done with that, right? So, and then the next one was static inputs. In fact, 1.5 was the bigger, bigger, biggest update, I guess. They, they came up with a generic concept, then where arcs, and then the static inputs. Example, if you, if you ever work with uh, system.out.println, you know, it's such a big statement. What you can do is you can import out object using static inputs, something like this. So that's, that's, one, that's one advantage you got in 1.5. In fact, in 1.5, they made one more update. Instead of saying 1.5, they, they went for 5.0 because it was a major update, right? So 1.2 was 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.4, but then it is not 1.5, it's 5.0, okay? So that was JDK 5. In fact, in every in every Java version, let, let it be 4, 5, 6, they also have some mini versions, you know. Uh, Java version 5 will get one more update, which is one point, I mean, underscore. If you if you download JDK from internet, you will understand this. So JDK 1.6, underscore, some U and then number. So that's an update. So, that, so that, those, those are minor, uh, minor updates like bug fix or security update, something like that. Okay. Then they came up with the concept of Java 6. So it was Java SA 6. And in this, they have removed. So before that, we used to say Java uh, J2 SE, right? So 1.5 was J2 SE 5. 1.4 was J2 SE 1.4. In Java 6, they removed that 2 and now it is Java SE. So till now, if you're using Java, it is Java SE. You are no longer learning Java 2 SE. It is just Java SE. Again, some name changes, that's it. Uh, then we got some updates, we got update for JDBC4, not major updates, all the updates in Java 1.6 were minor updates, not nothing big. But then, but then one version came which is 1.7. In fact, uh, most of you, I'm sure, will be working on 1.7 now. Maybe if you're working for a company, those servers are deployed on 1.7. Uh, if you're using Android, maybe also you're also using 1.7 then. So 1.7 is used a lot nowadays and it was introduced in 2011 and it was having lots of updates. The first one which is, uh, you know, when you use switch, you know, when you use switch statement in Java, so in switch, we can, it supports integer, right? But in 1.6 or 1.7, they have introduced a concept of using strings in, in switch statement. That means you can pass, uh, you can pass string, right? It, it also does string matching now. Uh, then we got update of uh, what? Automatic resource management. If you if you know that uh, in try catch we also have finally right. So we use try, we use catch, and we use finally. Now finally is used only for resource closing. Example: If you are using any resource like database connections, file handling, sockets. If you are using any of this, if you are creating any of these objects inside try block, you have to make sure that you also close it. But then where to close that? We can close that in a finally block, right? So that means we are closing those resources. What if your Java says, hey, don't worry. You just have to use try with resources and the closing of the resources will be done by us. Amazing, right? So that was introduced in 1.5. Again, how it looks like something like this on the screen. And now the smaller one, uh, when you when you go with collection API, so we write, so in 1.5, 1.6, we write, we create a list something like this. We say list. 
we specify maybe uh, integer, then we use uh, values, new, equal to new values, and then in the Angular backend as well, we have to mention integer, right? But in, in case of 1.7, the second, uh, I mean, the second value back and second uh, integer is not compulsory, you can remove that. But if you are mentioning on the, on the left hand side, why you have to mention on the right hand side, right? So that they have removed it. And that was 1.7. And I used to love 1.7. But then, then something came in 2014 which has changed everything. And that was Java 1.5, Java 1.8. Now what what new in 1.8? Okay, let's go go let's go back to 1.7, let's go back to 1.6. Can you can you define a method in it in inside interface? No, right? We can only declare it. We can only have abstract methods and interface. But in 1.8, we got a new feature which is uh, we can we can define a method inside interface by uh, using default keyword, of course. The next thing is, uh, can we use internal iteration for collection API? No, in 1.8 we got that. We got one more update in 1.8, which is my favorite for this lambda expression, right? So if you have such a big statement, something like this, if you if you are using threads, this is how you write thread, right? But then. Using lambda expression, you can you can convert that into this format in one line. Amazing, right? So that's that, that's lambda expression. Again, how lambda expression works, you can you can search my videos in the playlist. Uh, this is not the video to to talk everything about lambda expression here, but you can watch this in my playlist. So yeah, those are the updates in 1.8. We we got the update of uh, we can we can we can define method inside interface. We can use lambda expression and we can use stream stream API. So they, are, they came up with the concept of stream API to work with huge amount of data, and that is 1.8. So from last three years, we are working with 1.8, and after two months, so today, this is March now, in two to three months, we'll be getting 1.9, and let's see how that goes. Uh, sure, uh, if you want to upgrade yourself, this is the time, upgrade yourself from 1.7 to 1.8, and in two months, after one, uh, from 1.8 to 1.9. So always stay updated and that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, click on the like button and do subscribe if you are new to this channel. That's it. Thank you so much for watching.